uh, as uh, the most beautiful. So it's about the uh, evolution of a random bipartite uh, graph. Uh -huh. So uh, let's start with the definitions. Okay, so uh, we are today we're considering model uh, G and and P. Uh, what's that? So uh, we are taking uh, complete uh, bipartite graph. It's K and N, uh, and uh, we um, like take like each of uh, its edges is presented in the uh, random graph with probability p. So like we take each pair of vertices in different, uh, different parts and there is an edge between them with probability p. Uh, so uh, what is known about uh, this model? Okay, uh, first of all, if p is uh, equal to c divided by n, where uh, c greater than 1, uh, then uh, there exists a giant component uh -huh, uh, of the size uh, like Sn, and uh, it's uh, known that Sn divided by n, it converges in probability to some uh, two times uh, beta, uh, where beta is uh, a solution, like where beta is a solution of the equation, um, something like this, beta plus beta equals to one. Yes. So. Uh, that is an analog of uh, low of large numbers for, for its size. And uh, today I'm going to prove the central limit theorem. So... Uh, is that we consider large and larger n? Yes, yes, of course. Uh, so uh, all the results, like this asymptotic, yes. Uh, so, I mean, evolution is not like uh, something Change in the graph. Changes in the, in the graph, but we just consider yeah. Actually, evolution is uh, not actually like this. Look, evolution is a subtopic which considering the size sizes of the components, like their number, their complexity. But yeah, all in all, uh, n tends to infinity. Giant component. What is this? Yeah, giant component is uh, like connected component of uh, a such size. The largest connected component. Yes. Yes, so the largest co connected component of such uh, graph, it's uh, linear uh, in n, so like its size uh, equals to n times uh, 2 beta. Yes, uh, okay, yes, okay, 2n, then 2n times beta, uh, like plus some uh, small from n. So it was known that this fraction converges, I don't remember exactly what means in probability, right? uh, to, 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 to beta, right? Yes. So it was known before. Please. Yeah, uh, I'm not quite sure, like uh, during my work I had to prove it, but still it's not something uh, difficult. Okay. It's like, it's uh, almost... Your main result is that you establish some like... Uh, yeah, some, some stronger analog. Strong game, probably some concentration inequalities. Yes, uh, so uh, today, like not today, before uh, our result, it's known that Sn, yes, once again, Sn is the size of the largest component, and it's also well known, okay, known, that all other components have size, like, not, not larger than a logarithm of n. So we have one single giant component, which is linear uh, from n, and uh, lots of uh, smaller components, which are no more than logarithmic in n. So probability that we have two components of linear size is exponentially small. 
Uh, yes, I think it's even more than exponentially small. So yeah, it uh, is definitely tending to zero. Okay, so uh, what is known about its size? That it's linear, a li linear part plus some uh, O small from n. And what have we uh, established? That uh, Sn actually can be rewritten as 2n times uh, beta plus uh, square root from n times uh, uh, n zero uh, sigma squared plus something small uh, from square root of n. Yes, the uh, sigma squared uh, equals to Yes, is uh, to beta, one minus beta, divided by c, one minus beta uh, squared. Uh, yes, so uh, it's actually something similar to the central limit theorem in the uh, case of random uh, variables. Like uh, we know from the law of large numbers uh, that like uh, if Sn is x1 plus plus xn for large n, then Sn equals to expected value of x1 times n plus uh, something small from n. And uh, it's a uh, law of large numbers and the central limit theorem uh, says that uh, Sn equals to expected value of x first time n plus uh, square root of n times some c, where c is n zero variance of uh, x first and plus something small. Uh, so yeah, our result is even more precise concentration for the uh, value S n. Uh, okay. Any so, mm -hmm. you, know, you can maybe write that's that's a theorem or something. And also, could you please uh, like say exactly what means O of P? What, so yeah, O of P. It's like uh, like this term divided by. It's a random, you know, it's a random variable, and we want to say that it kind of converges. Uh, so you mean O, o small, right? Yeah. yeah, like something O small from square root of n. Uh, I'm personally not uh, quite sure about the precise definition, but I'd say that something like divided by square root of n, it tends to zero with, uh, like with high probability. So with probability tending to one. Okay. So like uh, this term could actually be pretty large, but its probability is also tending to zero. So like with probability, I don't know, uh, with probability, then one minus one over n. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. No, that's not, I mean, so there is a sequence of random variables. Yes. And like, yeah, uh, C1, so yeah, xc one and xn plus one and so on. Yeah. So it converges to zero in some sense. So then, like in each sense, it's like the probability. You mean this this one? No, uh, it's not actually converges to zero, but it's like um, yes. Okay. So this, like, I don't know. Maybe the probability that xc can is greater than epsilon converges to zero. I'd say, yes, okay, I'd say this sequence is uh, all small in probability from square root of n if uh, like cn divided by square root of n, yes, it converges to zero in probability. I think that's uh, correct. And in probability means that the probability that this thing is greater than epsilon uh, yes. Yes, that's it. Yes. Okay. So uh, let's. Uh, let's uh, prove it. Yes, let's prove this fact. 
Uh, so, uh, what can I... And the other question was, mm -hmm. why buy for five graphs? I mean, what? Once again? Why buy, buy for tight graph? Yeah. Uh, why not, you know, just you take N nodes, you know? Because for N nodes, N node, nodes, it's, uh, it's known. It's already known. Yes, it's already known, but like... And something like that holds or not? Yes, yes. Uh, like for if SN is like the size of the giant component of GNP, okay. then uh, we have just like this and probably like this. So the variance uh, of the second term and the expected value are twice as small. But somehow there is a big difference in two results. Uh, just say, oh, you know, the same proof, but there is two because... Yes, so uh, uh, like some interesting questions. Uh, lots of these facts, like the law of large numbers, the central limit theorem, they are uh, like well known when the basic graph G is uh, like a spectral expander. Not quite sure how it's called in English. So when the basic graph is expander, so uh, like when it's uh, largest eigenvalue and second largest eigenvalue, like they're not equal. So like KNN, KN, of course, is expander. It's like a large second value is N, and second largest is... Well, so <coughs> all these theorems uh, can be easily generalized. Yeah, okay, not... Graph to uh, expand. Yes, not quite, not, not really easily, but they can, yes. There are, uh, there are results, such results. Yes, and of course, for the bipartite graph, it's not an expander because yes. the eigen value N is... <laughs> okay. okay, maybe there is a more general result of my uh, proof for bipartite uh, expanders, but I'm not quite sure. Yes, okay. So, yeah, it's not uh, actually the generalization. Like, I've tried to just uh, take the initial proof and uh, generalize it on my model. For, for GNP, yeah, right. GNP. Who proved it? Okay, like firstly, it was proven by a uh, Russian uh, KGB member, uh, Vadim Stepanov, in uh, late 70s. But like the proof was uh, really difficult. It was massive and complex. And uh, the goal for the further random, random graph uh, specialists was to like make it easier. And uh, like the last, in my opinion, the best, the most understandable proof uh, was given in uh, 2012 by uh, Bella Bolobash. Uh, he is a, st a student of uh, Paul Erdős. So, like, uh, yeah, that's a famous guy. Yeah. So, and he, but his proof doesn't like adapt uh, easily to your city. Yes. Yes. Uh, it can, like, maybe it is, but I failed. So my proof, it uses it, but I'd say it just uses the fact that for, uh, that the... something else should be done also, yeah? Yes, sadly or happily, yes, something else should be done. Okay, so uh, let me show how it can be done for a uh, bipartite random graph. Uh, okay, so uh, we are uh, tra we are going to traverse our graph. So, uh, like we have uh, two components of size n, uh, and uh, what do we do? We have sets of a n here and b n here. It's uh, active vertices. Uh, yes, we have, uh, okay, uh, ut, wt, uh, unseen or undiscovered, uh, and uh, yes, e, t, uh, ft, it's explored. Uh, so, uh, what does this mean? So, first of all, all vertices are... All these six things are subsets. Yes, like uh, these all like uh, subsets of... <coughs> Is it a component? Yes, 
Okay, so first of all, all vertices are uh, unseen. Uh, then we take the first unseen vertex if, and put it into the active vertex. So uh, right now we have one active vertex. Uh, maybe should I write it down? Okay, maybe not right now. Yes, and then uh, if we have, uh, okay, like no active, we take unseen and in that's that's defined for every graph you know these sets so you have a bifurcated graph and you define for it a n b n u yes the, e the, and so on yes the difference is like in the bipartite case we have uh, a n and b, b n defined for like a n for first component I mean, it, first I just, part i just wanted to clarify that mm -hmm. the graph is already fixed and we just define you know these things as a function of a graph. Yeah, you mean about you're talking about randomness? No. We, yeah, like the, okay, yeah, this function for the graph. Like we have some fixed but bipartite graph. And we define a n n according to some. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yes. So like it's uh, okay. It's like <coughs> traverse. Traverse like abhod in Russian. Uh, so like uh, uh, we, so uh, once again. Uh, how uh, do we commit this? First of all, we have uh, no active vertices. All vertices are unseen. Uh, if we have no active vertices, we are starting a new component. We take one unseen vertex and put it into active. So it's new component. Uh, then, if we have active, like first active, uh, then we take take one. Uh -huh. uh, like put it into uh, explored uh, and uh, reveal uh, reveal all its neighbors. Uh, yeah, reveal means uh, reveal. Uh, but uh, interactive. Mm -hmm. So it's like a uh, breadth of search in like method in the regular uh, graph theory. So, uh, but yeah, but we, we are taking active vertices one by one. We like traverse into their uh, neighbors, like we put them into active. And after like, after this, Stage. Uh, and if uh, a neighbor is uh, explored, it yeah, we do nothing. Means, uh, yes, reveal all its neighbors. So in the BFS, so active means that are, you know. Active, it you means. Kind of have a, uh, you have a stack. Yes, and, and active, it means, so yes. Active, it's like current. Uh, yeah, current stack. Content of the stack. Mm -hmm. And you unseen. These are vertices that are, were never put to the stack. Yes. Uh, so far. And explored. That are already. Were. Maybe that's not. Uh, that were removed uh, from the stack already. Yeah. Yes, that's it. But like uh, once again, that's a bipartite graph. So uh, we uh, take all the neighbors of some active uh, vertex. Uh, but uh, they are. You have two stacks for different com two for two parts. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'd say we are completing this uh, simultaneously. So on the on a single step, we take one from a n vertex and one from b n, ah. and uh, like then we put uh, all neighbors like a from a n and b from b n. And we put all neighbors of B, which are actually in the first component, into A N. Right? Like uh, that since. Uh, mm, so yeah, A N are active vertices, uh, which are exactly in this component. So all neighbors of B N are going into A N, and neighbors of A N are going into B N. Okay, so, so yes, it's not like all neighbors of a n, we put them into a n, no, we put it on the corresponding set. And we remove this a from 
Yes, and of course, the, yes, af and after this step, we remove A from A and put it into export. Okay, so how this uh, helps us? Uh, I'd say let's uh, fix this and then let's like work with a random, random graph. Okay, first of all, uh, first of all, uh, like our first goal is to show that uh, we are starting our giant component uh, really soon. So like uh, lemma, uh, giant component uh, is started. No, okay, soon, let it be like this. Uh, started, it means that uh, we are, when we are traversing uh, the graph, so yes, uh, when there are no active vertices, it means in terms of uh, better search that the stack is empty. Okay, then we take some unseen vertex and start a new component out of it. So uh, we are starting with this traverse the giant component uh, very soon. Uh, I'd say yes, like soon, it means that on a step uh, like O small from square root of n. Uh, okay, so, uh, mm -hmm. okay, uh, let's uh, denote this moment by Tn and prove that for uh, any WN which grows, uh, the probability that Tn is uh, larger than WN times logarithm n uh, is tending to zero. Uh, so yeah, so we've started our component like at some uh, logarithmic time. And you said that it's square root n. It's smaller than square root n. Uh, yes, uh, I am talking uh, in this, uh, using this, uh, because uh, in our central limit theorem, our first te first term is linear, it's n times something, plus we have square root n times something, and then we have O small from square root n. And like if I show that something is O small from square root n, that it doesn't... Uh, I don't understand. Tn is... Yes, it's the moment when we start the giant component. Yeah, and uh, you say that this moment is... Uh, it's uh, small. ...or small uh, of square root of n. Yes. And then... Uh, it, but this claim is... Is stronger. That's just... Is much stronger. Yes, yeah, much stronger. And, and nothing wrong with that. Yes, and now... It just needs that it's uh, square root of n. Yes, because... Oh, so, actually, right. actually you well, need square root of n, but... Yes, but, uh, but it's... You can prove this. Yes, now. it can be, like, proven very easily. Okay, so, uh, uh, why is that? So, okay, uh, like, uh, let's uh, imagine uh, uh, at the moment Uh, this like w n uh, log n uh, like no giant component. So we haven't started giant component uh, at this step. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, as I said before, I I'm sorry that I'm given some uh, facts without a proof, but like uh, there are really long and uh, not really into theorems which were uh, pro proven before before me so uh, uh, at this step all all the components yes uh, they are or now or big from log n size so uh, yes, our components are at least are at most uh, logarithmic in size. So uh, then we have started uh, at least. Sorry, so we are using the fact that all the other components 
Yes, they are at, at most algorithmics. Yes, I, like I, I said that uh, there is one uh, giant component with linear size and there are lots of small components with logarithmic size. Actually, it's a very interesting result. Yes, it is. But uh, is it true for... Um, Bipartite? Bipartite, yes. Model ...and uh, for this uh, expander model? Yes, it's not sure about expander model, but once again, me myself have proven this fact. Uh, like it be connect, no? So, in, in, you know. No, expander means basic expander, not the random. Uh, yes, it's definitely well it's known for for bipartite, bipartite model. I forget the result, but if you take a grid, uh, say planar grid, mm -hmm. uh, or torus, uh, does not matter, then uh, giant components, uh, uh, components we have more um, complicated, more complicated way. As I remember, the can be several components of uh, comparable size. But grid? Uh, maybe not for uh, exact grid, but, uh, uh, but what this is uh -huh. have uh, considered a rather complicated model when uh, it's a slightly um, uh, distorted grid. Oh, oh, is grid infinite? No, no, grid n times n. n times n, and the components there. Yeah, and we uh, delete edges. Uh, the usual uh, physical model is we delete ed yeah. edges with uh, probability p, and uh, it, it, it's called percolation. Mm -hmm. And uh, percolation for rectangular grids uh, are rather easy, but they consider it more um, sophisticated cases when you take um, you distort grid in some ways mm -hmm. in local. Uh, neighborhood of uh, vertex you draw edges to in, in random maybe I don't remember exactly mm -hmm. but grid isn't expander yeah it's not expander so it's interesting where the um, yeah. boundary of uh, trivial behavior uh, is yeah I should because it's it's a very good nice property we have the only one gene component but still like uh, your result about uh, no, your result like result about the grid uh, it can depend on the probability i'd say yeah so like when p is exactly 1 over n there is uh, some really interesting things are happening oh in this model also yeah, like it's uh -huh. so-called yeah, double jump. Uh, it's a matter of uh, phase transition, of course, but um, and uh, the, it's really there is a regime of P mm -hmm. something. I forget exact statement because I'm not very interested in this result. My, my, my friend told me about them uh, 25 years ago, so, okay. so, so I have a very vague view. <laughs> impression what the results are. Um, Actually, I don't know, uh, did uh, they have uh, mathematical proofs because uh, they use... Uh, physical? Yeah, yeah, f f physical machinery, uh, method of replics and so on, and it, it's not uh, strictly correct. Mm -hmm. So m m maybe it's not mathematical theorems. Yeah, it's, but still, uh, like, there, there's only, definitely only one giant component, and so, uh, what about our lemma? Yes, so if uh, we haven't started the giant component uh, at this time, uh, then we have started, like uh, since all the components are at, at least logarithmic, uh, yeah, we started at least some constant times w of n components, right? Or like since, uh, uh, another component is uh, greater than logarithmic in size, and uh, like we have uh, done Wn times logarithm uh, steps. Like at each steps, we uh, consume one of the vertices which belongs to the set of components. Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, so like we have been uh, explored. Wn times logarithm n components and uh, vertices in total, and they belong uh, belong to com to set of components which are at most logarithmic in size. 
so uh, easily seen that the total number of components it uh, grows to infinity. Yes, and uh, uh, so sorry. So you know, each time you know the stack is empty, you choose. Yes, I choose. Uh, uh, no? Yes, at random. In random. So you know, each time uh, uh, while you haven't seen uh, the giant component. Yes. So you know, each time you tr each time the uh, you know. Start a component. Some, you know, Usually unlucky, you point it out to small components. Yes, and like at each step, the probability that we start giant component is some constant. Yes, is some constant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's exactly our two beta. Yes, and uh, the probability, such probability will be to be uh, not, yes, to beta times uh, CWN. Which actually stands to yeah, zero. Yeah, yeah, okay. Mm. Okay. Uh, so, uh, what's then? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now some, uh, now some machinery. Uh, okay. Uh, actually, what is uh, our goal? What are we going to establish in some time? Uh huh. Like the uh, maybe the interesting part of this page. Okay, so uh, when we will start the jam component, uh, what will be the equation for the active vertices? Okay, maybe it's always true. Not okay. So we can see that at the new. Okay, there should be like modulus number of active vertices on each step is number of activities on the previous step uh, minus indicator that uh, uh, like non-empty yes like if it uh, not empty so like if there are no vertices then we do not consume this one vertex yes and uh, plus uh, xt where xt is uh, uh, model 80 minus minus ct where ct is the number of uh, components like, uh, we've started mm. yes so uh, such Hmm? I forgot what is it. Yes, AT uh, like active. AT is the number of active vertices, but um, mm -hmm. okay, so but what is the number of com components uh, we started? We start component and actually we finish uh, it before starting the next one. Yes. So CT means we we have seen CT components yes. uh, up to this moment, and uh, I don't understand. Your rule says that if you, you take active vertex and then uh, put uh, all neighbor of all these neighbors that are non-active and do yeah. not explode. But uh, it seems that uh, this uh, Into relation. Uh, then it's not clear. It, it, it's, not, it's completely not, not clear. Uh, yes, it's. Um, okay, it can be actually. And actually, uh, you have uh, a term uh, cardinality of AT in the left hand side, side and in the right hand side. And we can conceal it. Yes, uh, maybe I have some mistake then there. Uh, about xt, so uh, at equals to at minus first uh, minus. Uh, the second term is quite clear because if uh, yes. you, you you need uh, the condition of this sort, but uh, the last term is mysterious. Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess the idea is that should be like the number of. 
Yes, yes. It haven't been explored and are not active, and there are neighbors of some, no, some how, how, how to uh, uh, express it in some terms. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it be like random. You know, like uh, yes, just a second. I'll I'll try to uh, think of it. T minus C T. Conan Swift started. Mm -hmm. Plus T minus C T. Okay, maybe. Uh, Maybe, maybe. Okay, so let, let me think. So if we, we have some elder set uh, of like from the previous step of active vertices, uh, then we remove uh, some uh, vertex mm -hmm. if uh, like there are, and uh, then we add some new set yes. of active vertices. And uh, which cardinality does it have? E T minus C T. Oh. It's very strange because uh, suppose T is one. Mm -hmm. uh, at the first step, when we start a new component, uh, we have the only one active vertex. Yes. And then we um, fire it and add uh, its neighbors, but. Uh, the number of its neighbors of sh should be positive, but uh, at this moment we have yes you you have a t uh, from the left and from the right. I I don't understand. Yes, uh, th this one is definitely shouldn't be true. Uh, yes, just just a second. Sorry. Um, um, General question, maybe you know, so we are interested in the size of the largest component. So, how to be expressive of the set of nodes? It's like the largest, yeah, it's the time, yes, where, uh, we had where the set of active nodes were not, was not, yes, not empty, right? So, it's like CT, I don't know, it's like number of. Of we have components. We started. Sh yes. Uh, uh, I guess like it's a, the largest interval of keys where CT is the same, right? But uh, not so simple because uh, we we have started gene uh, components, component, but there are um, non started components of small size. Yeah. And the number of these components can be large. Yeah, I mean, uh, but each, 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 you know, we, uh, we process one and we forget about it, you know. Yes, but... Even uh, if it's a large time... We, it, 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 it will be many moments of time uh, after starting the, the component when we start a new component. Yeah, I mean, I just mean it's a, it's a longest period of time when we process one of the components. You mean it's it's, it's ah like, I see I mean, it's not uh, the, size. Uh, the largest interval in, in time uh, yeah but that's not but it's not this, its size because you know we process many nodes of this component in, in the unit of time yeah so, so you you, you mean le, let mark uh, uh, moments of time when, when uh, we a, a active the uh, set yeah, is it's empty and is non empty uh, oh. Uh, I prefer ah, yeah, to, yeah. to mark uh, empty and yeah, take the distance, uh, the yeah, greatest distance. But, but then it's not also, it's not really the size of the largest component because... Yes, we, it's, it's not really the size, uh, I agree. So, I mean, I don't know, what's the idea that who, who, where, where we will get the size of the largest? Yes, okay, what's the idea? Okay, maybe I'm... Was too ambitious with the formula? Yes, so can, I can then describe the idea. Uh, so, okay, what's the idea? I guess this I can tell. Uh, okay, there is some rule uh, like of uh, drawing active vertices, like AT equals to something, number of active vertices. And on the other hand, yes, and there, there was 
okay there was let me recall the first couple a t minus first right my uh, mm, yes minus indicator yes not that a t is not empty that b t minus first is not empty plus okay something else so right uh, that's uh, because uh, a t uh, no yes well, yeah, I guess uh, so uh, what is the um, what is the number of new nodes you have on the step t plus one it's a t plus one minus a t the size of a t plus one right because you remove one one you remove one node and you know then the number of nodes you you've added is uh, a t plus one minus a t plus one, and you sum all these things over all periods of time. Uh, okay, uh, I guess like this. <coughs> so, okay, uh, let me clarify this formula. So, like, yes, we have some set on the previous step of active vertices. So it's t minus one, right? right? There? Yeah. Yes, t minus one. Uh, then we uh, remove, if it's not empty, we remove one active vertex from it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, since we like, uh, in the traversal, we, we take it, we grab all its neighbors and we put it in the export. So if there is one, then we do such operation with it. And then uh, what's next? What's the last term? At least what does it mean? Uh, how do we get uh, ver uh, active vertices in this component. We have some active vertex B, B in BT and we on uh, like each step we reveal all its neighbors and they uh, become active. Uh, all right so once again uh, as I said the uh, set of the active vertices in one of the components uh, is uh, like all the neighbors of the active vertices in another component. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, we have uh, uh, each of the edges is uh, like leading from one part to another, right? Because of the particular graph. And uh, uh, when we are traversing graph, we uh, take some and we take some active vertices, like all its neighbors. They uh, they lay in the another part of the bipartite graph, right? And we uh, mark them as active, but in the this in another component. You see, so uh, not really. Uh, по-русски? Ну, по-русски я могу, наверное. Что, да, ну, я, я еще раз про то, что... Э, да, по-русски. Мы же, когда обходим граф, мы вот э, берем вершину активную mm -hmm. и кладем всех ее соседей в активные, как мы про это говорили. Ну, mm -hmm. во-первых, может, не всех, потому что... Все, ну, всех ансин. Э, Какие-то, кто уже лежат, мы не кладем, или кто уже были, мы же тоже не кладем. Да, те, кто, ну да, те, которые еще не рассмотрены. Ну да, и что? Вот. Но они, мы их кладем в активные вершины в другой компоненте. Ну. То есть у нас просто такой процесс входа был, верно? Ну, это -то да. А что такое draw t от чего-то там? Да, ну draw t это, грубо говоря, вот а э, t. Все соседи, которые, э, ну все активные вершины, которые образуются вот этим вот revealing всех соседей активной вершины из другой компоненты в нашу. Ну, то есть как-то вроде ничего не, не происходит. Просто это те вершины, которые добавляются. Да, те кто, вершины, которые добавляются за счет того, что у нас здесь есть активная вершина. Okay. Uh, вот, да, наверное. Окей, okay, so I guess, so draw T, I don't know, it's like just the set of nodes. Uh, which is added to a t on, ste uh, on, on step t, I guess. 
and we multiply it by the indicator yes the fact that we have some no active uh, nodes in the other part of the bipartite graph yes so like if we don't have any active vertices in the other part then we draw nothing of course yes <laughs> and uh, what's the uh, idea behind this uh, it's that uh, uh, if when we started we've started a giant component uh, then uh, like um, okay then this b t minus 1 is uh, not empty Uh, so like uh, I, want to, I guess you want to use the, the uh, you'd like to use the fact that you know only just a uh, very small number of nodes were very pro processed uh, you know uh, uh, so far right so more or less no like okay I all, 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 uh, all neighbors of B except like log square I don't know or something like that can be put into the stack Unless, uh, well, of course, we should have an edge from B to them. And we know that this edge, like, uh, 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 from B to B. No, uh, actually, like, this is uh, even easier. I mean, okay, uh, I say that we've started the giant component at some uh, moment. And then, uh, like, let's uh, wait until uh, the active vertices. <sighs> Uh, just a so, second. I mean, I guess you want to say that more or less you put every time you put about C nodes. Uh, yeah, what I'm saying. Uh, into the graph. I mean, uh, what I'm uh, uh, saying that like until. Uh, oh no. <sighs> yeah, they're not that easy in uh, in English, I guess. It's correct, I'm sure. Да. Я про то, что до того момента, пока у нас активные вершины в одной из долей не закончились, у нас вот этот индикатор всегда равен одному. И получается, мы смотрим, что вот этот вот процесс, он превращается ровно в процесс, ровно такой же процесс обход, ну, обхода, то есть там такая же формула для активных вершин, которая верна для одного, для обычного графа GNP. So like until the moment when uh, bt uh, equals to zero, it's cardinality. Until bt is empty, then uh, this indicator uh, equals to one, and the formula for the number of active vertices is exactly the same as it is in the case of the single uh, GNP. Okay, so at this, play, at this moment we want to reduce everything to the same plane Yes. For, for uh, yes, so like uh, how it looks like, I can explain this. Mm. So uh, there is, there are uh, like first part, second part, and vertices, and vertices. So at the very beginning, we, st we have started giant component. Yes, uh, and uh, then there is uh, the moment tau when, for instance, a tau is empty. Uh, and uh, I want to say that uh, the tau moment equals to the like minimum size of atom Sn1, Sn2. So like we can see from this formula that until there are active vertices in the, another component, then the process is uh, exactly equal to the, uh, the same process in a single uh, GNP. Uh, yeah, mm, no. Yeah, I mean, probably, but then why we need such a complicated argument then to, I mean, I don't 
and what's the point that it starts uh, so early? I mean, yeah, that. Uh, you want to? I mean, you, you yeah. What I want to say that like the uh, such process of traverse of the uh, bipartite random graph is uh, almost exactly the same as the two independent uh, traverses of uh, like two GNPs, two regular uh, random graphs. Uh -huh. Yes. So, so your idea is you define some process on uh, random. Type, uh, yes. But uh, you ensure the property that it is can be considered actually as two independent processes or yes. two copies of. Uh -huh. Yes. And uh, what's the idea uh, behind this? Yeah, maybe I was too ambitious yes, in. Exactly. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure about independent copies. Or maybe yeah. Yeah, uh, like uh, once again, since until this moment now, when uh, the, like the first moment after the start of the giant component, when there are no active vertices in one component, we like have this uh, such formula. Such formula like is holding true. So this equals to one. And uh, the number of active vertices is exactly the same as in regular uh, random graph. And like when uh, uh, the one in one of the components the number of active vertices is zero, then we finished uh, of drawing one of the giant components. Right? So like there are like uh, this formula for eighty. And uh, like exactly the, sa no, the same formula for BT. And when either AT or BT is empty, uh, then uh, we have uh, drawn a whole giant component in one of the two independent copies. It means like the distribution of such moment is the same as uh, we've drawn the smallest of two giant components in two independent G and, and P's. Yeah, it can be really not easy to follow since uh, there are uh, yeah, lots of technical uh, issues here. Uh, so yeah, so like uh, if I consider in such moment when uh, after the start of the giant component, then when there are no active vertices, then until mo this moment, the moment tau. We draw like tau vertices here, we draw tau vertices here, then for instance in uh, this component there are no active vertices and there is some b tau active vertices and the latter uh, proof, like I, later I, after this I should prove that from each of these vertices we will draw really a little of uh, like small part of the component so like from each like we have b tau vertices after this uh, b tau is something like square root of n uh, like theta in probability and then i say that from each of these uh, vertices i draw the constant number of uh, of other vertices so it all looks to me as you're saying something like that. So you can take a random, you know, G and P, G of n. Mm -hmm. So just n nodes, and there are n, n minus two over two edges. Mm -hmm. and so you take put, take each one, each edge independently of probability. Yes. And then you can draw it as a as a bipartite graph. I mean, you just take a copy of one node, the copy of the other node. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you just draw an edge if there but is. But it's a, not the same. It's not the same, right? Yes. Because you so. have a restriction if you have an edge from, uh, you know, it's from symmetric. one. Yeah, it should be symmetric. So if if, if you have an edge from left, uh, no, it's how to how to put it like, uh, you have left nodes and right nodes. Mm -hmm. if you have an edge from the first left node to the second right node, so then you have to have an edge from. 
Uh, yes, first right to second left. Yeah, you know, the other way around, from the left second node to the right, to the first right node. And then, obviously, the size of the largest component of this thing is twice the size of the largest component in the uh, yes. initial thing, because it just, you know, doubles, you know. All the, 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 you just have two copies of each node. And you know, just everything doubles, so. and, mm -hmm. so, and then you say, okay, then something is quite similar if you just take, take, you know, you don't have these restrictions that it should be symmetric. But then yes, but I guess this like uh, this model is really different to what to this uh, symmetric model you suggested. Yeah, but then you know, you, th you think that it's not you, that there are the same formulas, and I don't know. So, uh. Uh, so I mean, yeah, I mean it's it's becoming even more unclear as I see. I mean, I just, uh, we, I guess we kind of see your idea, what you want. I mean, the yeah. general idea of the proof, but I don't see like any hope that we will, will get into details. Yeah. Like this. Me too. We'll have some revelation uh, 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 that, you know, uh, some. Yeah, I, I see your point. Maybe we can finish here and I can answer some questions if there are such. Uh, the, the question, uh, okay, if you are going to finish, let's uh, thank the speaker. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I mean, we have a lot of time like to discuss. To you, but I'm just, you know, I'm just asking, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I see, but. Uh, and yeah, maybe you can. Just yeah, definitely, the the letter of the proof is going into the details. So. Yeah, I mean. But but uh, you, you say that um, the, your model uh, is different from symmetric model suggested by Sasha. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, what uh, statistical facts are different? As I understand, uh, your um, loss of um, mm -hmm. your analog of central limit theorem is the same because actually yes, yes. Uh, you, you <coughs> make twice uh, the size of mm -hmm. uh, gen component in the complete graph, and uh, as for Variation. Uh, yeah, like, like it's also uh, twice be, be, because it's uh, it's it maybe happens the same. Like if we're traversing this graph, the bipartite graph. So like when we are going from up upper vertex mm -hmm. here, then it's like one. It go it goes to one giant component, and when we go like in that on the other side from uh, bottom component part to the top part, then it goes to another component. Yes, and uh, like, I guess in the model uh, Sasha suggested there are mm, even number of ages, always. Yeah. yeah. And maybe, uh, okay, at least this uh, maybe can break something because like there are moments in such traverse when there is only one active vertex, like only in 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 this component there is active vert uh, active vertex, and. It makes all this thing less uh, no, symmetric. No, my question is not mm -hmm. about adjusting your um, proof to this symmetric model, uh -huh. but uh, yeah, I see. I thought um, that uh, you, you can uh, explain why these models are really di different. O of course, they are different. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they, yes. Uh, 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 they are different uh, probabilistic distributions of graphs, but. Uh, mm, of course, uh, we can uh, distinguish them if we uh, look at uh, this symmetric property. Yeah. Uh, say, count the number of symmetric edges. OK, so once again, what was the model? Like, there was uh, some n vertices here, n vertices here. And uh, when do we ca like connect two of them uh, with the you, vertex? You take a graph on n vertices. Mm -hmm. And then you duplicate vertices. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you. No. Yeah, like if we you, are you use uh, any edge uv in the original. Yeah, I, I see. To, yeah. Uh, f f for two edges, uh, uh, u uh, top mm -hmm. v bottom. Uh, yeah. U bottom v top. Uh -huh. Is it uh, some uh, well known 
uh, model of generating. No, 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 no. The same is just taking like two copies. You just it's just GNP, but you just take two copies of each node. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But basically, it's GNP. But uh, if you consider it as bi as a bipartite graph, mm -hmm. some properties should uh, differ maybe. So from, from then I model. just have a question. Uh, so we have these two models. And let's consider a symmetric bipartite graph. You basically, it's just random symmetric bipartite graph, mm -hmm. which can be turned into a graph on n nodes. And just, you know, a, a possibly unsymmetric uh, mm -hmm. symmetric bipartite graph. And then you can take two nodes from one part of the part, let's say two left nodes. And then what is the probability that they will be connected by a path of length two? In, in two models. Is this more or less the same or not? Uh, I guess, like, uh, if we're talking about the connection of these two models... Well, I mean, I guess... I'd say the, sim uh, the symmetric bipartite graph and the, like, G, N, and P. Yeah. G, N, and P, I guess, like, can be obtained as we take the symmetric bipartite graph and we throw away each edge with probability one half, yeah. I guess. So GNP is a symmetric graph, but each edge can be uh, uh, removed with probability one half. I, I I'd say. Mm. Mm, okay, I mean I don't get it. So uh, so. Um, yeah, like uh, all along, that's an uh, interesting thought. Like, uh, so, I mean, let's say you can be considered mm -hmm. a bipartite graph. You are interested in connected components. You can consider, you know, connected components restricted to restricted to one of the parts, right? Mm -hmm. And what is the connected? So you know, two nodes are connected by a path of length two, right? Why two the connected components may contain yeah, I mean, vertices on light. Okay, so I mean we can imagine that we draw an edge between two nodes uh, from one of the parts if they are connected by a path of length two in this bipartite graph. So mm -hmm. they have a common neighbor, right? And then we are interested in in a, in a, in the largest component of the thing. Because I guess probably you would like to say that if you you consider a giant is the largest component in the bipartite graph, then it has a part which lies in the left. Uh, part, uh, it has left nodes, it has right nodes, and more or less, they uh, both of these left and right parts of this largest connected component are the same size as in G and P. It's another it twist. Uh, now you're suggesting uh, to take this G and P graph bipartite and, and build up uh, visual graph. Yes, actually it, it's true, but uh, like uh, here is the, uh, the like uh, maybe the yeah, difference. No, like the difference is that not the uh, edges are not independent, you know. Yes, and it uh, follows that like in the random bipartite graph, yes, like the uh, uh, part of the giant component in the first part in the second part, they are giant components of two independent GN and P's. Yeah, I mean, and, and here is uh, R. Like in the symmetric case, there are like uh, giant components of two of, of the same uh, GN, GNP. Mm -hmm. So like that's the difference. So there are uh, yes, it's but this. I mean, in any case, if you know that there is all, if you if we already believe that you know there is only one large component. Mm -hmm. Then we have to sh only show that you know the largest component in the left uh, restricted uh, in the left part of our graph is like beta n, and the largest component in the right part is, beta, is also beta n, and just with high probability. You know, yeah, but st but uh, we are we wanted to prove like more precise result. So it's like beta n plus something times square root of n, like some c. Yeah, I mean, you prove that it's beta n plus square root of n in both of the parts, then you sum up it and, you know, this... Yes, yes, of course, yeah, it's square root of n. it should end up like this. And right. then, you know, on the left part, it just some... If you restrict your attention only to the left nodes, then, you know, 
which of the left nodes lie in the same connect component. If there is a chain of, you know, these uh, paths of length two that connect these nodes. And then, uh, you know, what is the probability of two left nodes to have a common neighbor? I guess it should be something about PN, right? Yeah, it should be. So, I mean, why is that? Because you have, like, P, uh, the probability that a specific node on the right will be their common neighbor is what? Is P squared? And Yeah, over N squared. Um, and then what we and then we sum this value over all the vertices, so it's like uh, not p like c, c over n squared, uh, yeah, I mean. and like n times, like this. But then somehow it's, it should be intuitive. It should be like it's the same as c over n, no? Same as c. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe it's not like this. Maybe we yeah, count yeah. something twice, and then we should uh, divide something. No, I mean, okay, we can write a mm -hmm. precise formula. So I okay, guess it's one minus p squared. Yeah. One minus one minus p squared to the n, something like this. Oh, uh, it sounds like some constant, isn't it? Some exponent. I mean, just... Ah, P squared, right? Okay, okay, yeah. So we have, like, 10 possible common neighbors. Mm -hmm. Each is a neighbor with probability P squared. Yes. Yeah. So the probability that we have no common neighbor is 1 minus P squared to the N. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I guess it should be something like 1 over P, 1 minus P, if we want to say that, you know, this model is more or less the same if we just have P independently for each H. No? Okay, what is it this? Seems like, what is that? Sec sequence n squared, n is n squared divided by n. Oh, it's. Uh, like what's this? 1 over n is, yeah, it's like e minus c over n. Yeah, it doesn't see, seem like c over It's very large. Yeah, it's it's it definitely is. So oh, I mean, it looks like one over p. If it's so it's. But I just don't get how to look at it. So the probability that two vertices uh, are at distance two is very high, and no, actually, no, 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 no. I mean, look, calculation shows. Yeah, yeah. And the probability that there will be no. Why no? Because 1 minus p squared to the n, it's a probability that there will be no common neighbor of two left. Ah, yes, 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 you are quite right. So we should take 1 minus this exponent and it gives uh, approximately the same. So it nice. gives 1 minus. Nice. What is this? It's like C times N plus no, uh, small. something small. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, my idea was that, you know, you have just a, a, a model where you have every H independent of probability P. And then you have also like this model where you have each H with probability, which is also like P. Yeah. It, it, so, it, it, yeah. But it's it's uh, like uh, it's not independent. We, 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 yeah, we, we have the problem with independence, so we should. Oh, uh, uh, we right? So I mean, if you have, uh, yeah, we do because if you have the edge between yeah. the first and between yeah. U V and U W, then you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you have common edges that come yeah, yeah. play that. Sure. Thing. So. Um, <coughs> It's nice observation, but uh, I'm not sure that it would lead to alternative proof or something. Yeah, but still, it's yeah, it sounds. Interesting. It's an interesting question. What is a distribution? You take a G and an P graph. You take this construction to obtain a vertex graph. What is the uh, distribution on n vertex graphs? Yeah, I, I do not know. Uh, it seems that uh, independence. Uh, uh, does not hold uh, because uh, we have problem. But uh, in some 
aspects that can be similar to GNP model. I don't know. It's interesting question. Yeah, I'll definitely think of uh, such uh, such result, uh, like such model, the symmetric bipartite graph. Very strange. In fact, use more probability, but not independently. Yeah, and it remains the same in such case. Okay, if that's that's all, thank you yeah, once thank again. You. Thank you, thank you for coming. Yeah. Да, наверное, было, конечно, слишком амбициозно в плане того, чтобы рассказать это за одну пару. Ну, понятно, да. Да, тут тоже. Я, я почему-то вот мне.